Good evening, everyone. I'm going to give some time for you to come online for our very first um, Bible study session, Bible study session and group. Um, so as I give some time for you guys to come online, I'm excited about tonight and sharing a topic and we're going to just study the word of God. So please, if you come online, let's greet each other. Um, I greet you in the name above all other names and the love of Christ. And I see there's all of you coming online tonight. And uh, welcome, welcome. May you be blessed tonight. I hope you're ready. If you're not ready, please uh, get your Bible, get a pen, get a notepad. Um, you know, even in church, we always make notes. I mean, we always uh, make notes and study the Word of God because in all you're getting, get understanding. So tonight, I hope that there will be understanding regarding... A, can't do this I mustn't do that I'm just checking out the camera because there is certain things that need to happen tonight and um, welcome to all of you I uh, see Monique and Michelle and Janine and Devon and uh, Damien and Chantal van Deventer Monique I see all of you guys all coming online I'm just gonna give some time Bianca Colette Welcome tonight. I hope you're ready to study the Word of God. And I hope that everybody is excited. Um, I asked for topics. I didn't get a lot of topics, but I got one, which um, if I missed your topic, sorry about that. Uh, so um, we're going to look at a topic tonight and I'm just going to give a little bit more time for people to come online. So while we wait, let's just open with prayer and then um, we will uh, carry on and get right into the Word of God. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you are here through your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that we get to study your Word. Thank you, Lord, that we will get understanding regarding your Word. Because you are the Spirit of understanding and the Spirit of knowledge and the Spirit of wisdom. So we thank you tonight, Lord. For revelation, for giving us understanding and knowledge that we can practically use in our life, in our life, in our lives that we live every day, day by day living, unto the glory of your name. In Jesus Christ's name, and all God's children said, Amen. So if you're online tonight, um, just maybe this is all new to all of us, so... Um, I'm just going to try and explain how I think we must go about this. Um, we will choose a topic and then we will study and see what the Word of God says about the topic. And um, maybe we will go through all of the, 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 the notes and as the Spirit led me this week to study on this and get um, some material together then um, I'm going to give you a chance to also then ask questions and then we're going to get better understanding when we answer and when God answers our questions. Amen. So this is a very relaxed platform. It's a very interactive platform and um, please feel free that when we do um, get into the questions, please feel free to speak your mind and to ask questions. Um, so tonight um, I've got this topic and I'm going to show you guys and this is what we're going to look at is how to worship God with your body. How to worship God with your body. So that is, that is the topic for tonight how to worship God with your body and um, I see there's about 20 of you online already so we'll see how it goes tonight I think one or two of these um, points that we're gonna touch on might hurt 
it might reprimand, it might even uh, offend. But please know this, that God always chastens those who He loves and disciplines us. So all of this is done in the love of Christ and there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. But this is one of the topics that came up. And um, how do we worship God with our bodies? So if you have your Bibles, then please go to Romans chapter 12. And we're going to start there tonight in the book of Romans chapter 12. And um, I'm going to read just two verses there. And then um, we will work through um, a couple of things tonight. So I, I hope you're excited. I hope you're with me. And I hope you stay with me all through the study. So, um, first of all, before I um, get to the scripture, I want to say this, that um, our lives as believers should declare Jesus Christ. Our lives should declare Jesus Christ. So, no matter what. That is, as children of God, our lives should declare Him. And the way we live, the way we live day by day, should worship Him, should worship Jesus Christ. Um, worship is not just a spiritual act or a spiritual song that we sing on Sundays. Worship is a lifestyle and worship is not just spiritual. Worship is sp spiritual but physical as well. So tonight, as we start to look at this a little bit deeper, we are commanded to worship Him. And um, let's, let's go to Romans chapter 12. I hope you're there. If you're there, just um, give me a thumbs up there and... Or a little heart or something. Not a not an angry face, okay? We haven't said enough for you to be angry already, alright? Nothing to be angry about. Hello, Nancy. So, if you love studying the Word of God, then welcome tonight. If you are new to studying the Word of God, then welcome. I hope this richly bless you. And, you know, we cannot have or get enough bread of life. And food from God's word. Amen. So Romans 12. I hope you're there. I'm reading. I'm using the New King James. Um, as a study translation. And um, it's a word for word translation. And I'm reading from verse 1. And this is Paul writing at the church in Rome. And he says. I beseech you therefore brethren. And the other translation will say. I beg you therefore brethren. By the mercies of God. That you present your bodies. A living sacrifice that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service so he says he begs of his brethren we planted the churches that by the mercies of God that they would represent and uh, present their bodies he doesn't say just their spirits. He says their bodies as a living sacrifice. So, in saying that, I believe that God made us. Who of you believe that? God is creator of heaven and earth and God created us. And God, when he created us, says in Genesis 1.31... So God made man out of the dust of the ground and gave him a body. This is not what it says. I mean, uh, this is my notes on it. And um, verse 31 in Genesis 1 says, And God saw that it is very good. So if God made everything, and God made me, and God made you, um, and gave you your physical body, then and said that it is very good, then surely our bodies is good in the eyes of the Lord. 
And um, if you don't know it, maybe um, maybe this is confirmation this this evening. But one Thessalonians five twenty three confirms that we are spirit, soul, and body. So you are a spirit that possesses a soul that lives in a body. Who of you have got a body tonight? Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so I'm sure we all have a body, right? And um, God saw that it is very good. God made us and saw that it is very good. So if God created us as material beings, made in His image and gave us a mandate to cultivate the earth and fill it with His image, then our bodies must have purpose. Will you agree? So that is out of Genesis 1.26. God made us and He gave us dominion. He gave us a mandate to subdue the earth and to be fruitful and multiply and fill this planet. So surely if God made us in His image and gave us the mandate, then our bodies must have purpose. You know, there is a, sometimes there is a common factor that uh, happens when Christians give their life to, to Christ and in our walk that we think it's a spiritual walk only. And what this does is that we start living spiritually um, but we never really understand, and, and, and we, we take even scripture, we take Galatians 5, 16, where it says, walk in the spirit so you not fulfill the lust of the flesh. flesh. I agree, we have to walk in the spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But that doesn't mean our flesh is not important. Our fleshly desires shouldn't be important. But our flesh is very important. Our bodies is very important. Matter of fact, and you can write this down, I believe that to have a body is one of the legal things that needed to be on this planet. Everything that hasn't that doesn't have a that doesn't have a physical body is except for the 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 angels that are ministering spirits are here and operating here um, illegally. That's why we also see that demon spirits are always after a body. They want a body to live in. Because that gives them legal right here to do some stuff and to get some stuff done. So I hope you're following me tonight. Um, if Christ came in the flesh, and that's in John 1 verse 14. So I'm not going to read all of the scriptures tonight. I'm going to give you the scriptures and you can write them, dot them down and go and read after this and, 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 and use this study to feed your spirit right through the week. Um, and then don't forget about this morning's message, right? Um, but it is a supernatural kingdom. Amen. But um, I'm giving you these scriptures so that you can go and read it out of your Bible with your own eyes and that you would take it in and see it. See that it stands in what it says in the Word of God. So, um, if Christ came in the flesh, and in Him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, that is in Colossians 2 verse 9, then the body bears eternal significance. The body bears eternal significance. If all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, have been created by Christ and for Christ, this is in Colossians 1, Colossians 1 verse 16. I hope I'm not going too quickly. If I'm going too quickly, just, just comment there and say, whoa, pastor. All right. I said we're interactive. So I, wa I don't want you to lose me tonight. I want you to get all of this. Amen. So you can, I'm, I'm reading the comments all the time. So I'll stop if I have to stop. But um, it says in Colossians 1 verse 16 that everything was made for, by, and through Christ Jesus. That then um, if Christ, uh, if everything that is visible and invisible have been created by Christ and for Christ, then what do we to do or what we do to our bodies either supports or betrays our worship? Of Christ. Did you get that? 
If everything that is visible and invisible, so the natural and the supernatural, right? If everything has been created for Christ, by Christ, and through Christ, then what we do with our bodies either supports or betrays our worship of Christ. So you can either say Amen or Aina. Right? But you and I are visible tonight. And we have received visible bodies. Which was made by Christ, for Christ, and through Christ. That all things would give glory to Christ. So... Um, that's the first little Aina. I <laughs> see there's an Amen and an Aina. Okay. Good. But, um, and that scripture there, Colossians 1.16 says, actually the verse says, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. It's Colossians 1 verse 16. And if the message of our God reconciling all things to Himself in Christ, that's Colossians that's Colossians, um, sorry, I've got just the screen going blue here. Yeah? Um, in Christ, Colossians 1.20, really applies to all things, then how we treat our bodies is directly re related to a right proclamation of it. So it says in, in Colossians 1.20 that God reconciled all things to himself through Christ. Which means all things. If we really want to get completely technical. Then all things. I hope you agree with me tonight. Means that it means my body as well. Our bodies as well. Our bodies has been reconciled. With God. In Christ Jesus. So now that we have. Just laid a little bit of foundation. And determined that. God is definitely. Um interested in our worship and not just our spiritual worship but also our physical worship and the worship of our bodies and those of you've just joined sorry i'm just gonna show you quickly this is the topic for tonight how to worship god with your body that is the that is the topic that we are dealing with so i hope you've written that down and i hope that you're on the same page so um now that we have determined that that there is clear evidence scriptural evidence that god actually uh, created our bodies and saw it as very good and god is interested and also uh, is it's important to God how we look after our bodies, what we do with our bodies, and that we worship Him with our bodies. So, in saying that, there is many ways to worship God with our body. But um, I believe that the Holy Spirit picked out three areas that we're going to discuss closely tonight. And um, knowing me, you'll know that this will even challenge me. But be it as it may, I believe that God um, always builds us up. He always teaches us and He always um, helps us to become uh, Christ-like. And to live our life strong, full of faith here on earth. Amen. So, um, I just want to, before we go to the three um, points that I want to uh, look at intensely or intently tonight... Is I want to give you one more scripture. It is 1 Corinthians 10.31. 1 Corinthians 10.31. And it's, um, it is a well-known scripture. But um, it is a powerful scripture. And I even want you to go to that in your Bible. So that you can highlight it. So that you can um, write next to it. And uh, that you would learn from tonight and maybe in future know that where it stands 
Um, you, you know it, maybe you don't know it, but that's okay. It's in the Word of God. It says, verse 31, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you, I mean, there you will agree with me tonight that it doesn't matter what, whatever covers whatever, right? All of it, whatever, whatever we do, do it unto Christ, do it to the glory of God. Amen. So um, that is the scripture that I want to give before we get into the rest. Maybe one more, one more scripture, and then we'll get to the three points. Are you with me tonight? Just a thumbs up there if you're with me. Uh, I'm, I'm dependent on your interaction so that I don't lose anybody. But promise me that you'll stop me if I do lose you. Amen. So one more. 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18. I want to give you some time. I see the thumbs going up. We are not chased tonight. We are not um, going to rush through anything. So, um, we all, I see we got a lot of thumbs up. Okay. Amen. Are you in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18? It says the following. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and who are not, and you are not your own? I want to give that one. I'm just, I'm, we're going to look at it a little bit later maybe, just touch on it. But it's a very powerful scripture. And you can also highlight that in your Bible. It speaks of our bodies. It speaks of our bodies. Touch your body tonight. Touch it and say, yes, this is my body. But I have received it from God. But it's not my own. I'm not my own. I have been bought by Christ. And I belong to God. So my body is the temple of God and it belongs to God. And um, actually, you know, verse 18 is a whole another thing. And I'm not going to touch too much on it, but it says flee sexual immorality. And um, this is where, you know, um, people say sin is sin. No, sin is not sin. Here the writer, Paul, makes it clear that sexual sin is worse than normal sin. Because sexual sin, you sin against your own body. So that's why he says flee that sexual immorality and get out of that stuff because you're sinning against your own body. And do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and you don't belong to yourself? You are being bought. You've been bought with a price. You belong to Christ Jesus. Amen. We belong to Christ Jesus. So what does it mean for believers day to day's life? What is all of this? God is interested in our worship um, God is interested not just in our spiritual worship, but also in our physical worship. So what does this mean for you and me daily, our daily lives? So I've picked three tonight. And there is many more, but for time purposes, we're going to look at three um, points of worship physically. And the very first one I want you to write down is worship God with sleep. What, Pastor? Did you say sleep? I say yes. I said, worship God with sleep. So maybe some of you are already like feeling uneasy because you don't really sleep like you should. Um, you don't really like sleeping um, so much or maybe, maybe you sleep a lot. Okay. Um, and we're going to put some context on this. So um, I want to first of all start off by saying this. Sleep is a blessing. If you read, let's go to Psalm 127. Let's just quickly go to Psalms. Just page to Psalm 127. Are you ready for Bible study? Do you have your Bibles? 
Are you paging through your Bible? Are you reading us with me? Are you highlighting your Bible? I'm so glad to be with you. You know, we are privileged, blessed to have the Word of God right here in front of us and to be able to study it freely. Amen. So for, your, for those who have come online that don't know we, what we're talking about, we are talking about the topic tonight is how to worship God with your body. Okay. And um, what, Psalm 127 verse 2 says, uh, To eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Let's read the whole verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Another, um, another translation says, He grants his children and those that he loves sh- that he, he, he grants them sleep. So God has grant, granted us sleep. It is a blessing. Sleep is a blessing. So um, how do we worship God um, with sleep? Well, let's uh, look at this. Uh, God, first of all, I want to say this. God created sleep, although he doesn't participate in it. And that is confirmed by Psalm 121, verse 1 to 4, where it says, uh, He who made heaven and earth neither slumbers nor sleeps. But he made sleep for us as a blessing. He made sleep for us as a form of worship. Did you hear me? A form of worship. You mean, Pastor, I can sleep and worship God? Most definitely. Because when you're at peace, right? When you're at peace and you have perfect peace, that is when you sleep the best. So when you don't have peace and you don't sleep, then you will lack in that department. So if you are rolling around and you're not sleeping and you struggle of insomnia and blah, 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 whatever the doctor has said you have, then you are not worshiping God with your body regarding sleep. You know, eight hours is a blessing. Eight hours is good sleep. And we need all to get our sleep, right? If you agree, please just say amen. Um, If you don't agree, just say amen. That's fine. That's how we're going to do this. So um, I want to give you just a couple of um, things regarding this so that we can break it down a little bit. Hello, Pastor Rian Daphnikop. Welcome online. (laughs) <laughs> we are studying the topic called, how do we worship God with our body? How do we worship God with our bodies? So we are at number one. We determined that, that we have determined that God um, gave us our bodies. Um, all things has been reconciled to God uh, in Christ Jesus. Um, we are not our own. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And I see a lot of amens. Thank you, guys. Um, uh, And we have moved on from that and we have picked three points or topic uh, subtitles to this topic and how we can worship God with our bodies. And number one is we worship God with sleep. Yes, you heard correctly. Sleep. You can sleep unto the glory of God. Amen. Isn't that fantastic? That is fantastic. Yet we don't simply succumb to sleep when our bodies say enough. We must approach sleep like anything else, with intentionality in our worship and witness of God, living by the Spirit and not gratifying the desires of the flesh. So, first of all, we cannot complete or go on and on and on until our bodies say enough. We have to understand that God made sleep, although He doesn't participate in it, He made sleep as a blessing for us and also as a tool of worship. Because when we sleep, you have to get this, when we sleep eight hours a night and we sleep like babies, we sleep like um, peaceful, then we are worshiping God because we are peace. We have found our peace and our rest in God and we trust in Him fully. You know why people toss and turn? You know why people don't sleep? It is a word called stress. Ne? Stress. Of worry. Nee, hulle worry en stress die hele nacht dier. 
hulle rol rond, en dan rol hulle van die bed af, nee? Um, when you trust God, and you find peace in Him, you will sleep, but you'll also worship Him in sleeping. Um, so, A, for some, this may mean the most spiritual thing we can do is go to bed. In the culture of perceived self-sufficiency and rampant workaholics, there comes a time every day to close our doors, close our computers, close our Bibles, and close our eyes for rest. That is A. For some of us, this means the most spiritual thing you can do tonight is to go to bed. Then B. For others, this may mean the most spiritual thing we can do is get out of bed. <laughs> this is where there's always a balance. Because God gifts us with sleep, not for our self-indulgence, but so that we may worship and witness to Him. And a major part of that worshiping and witnessing is through our work, mandated from the very beginning of creation. So we cannot also now say, okay, I'm going to sleep and I'm going to worship God in my sleep, but I'm going to sleep 40 hours. No, I'm not going to even wake up. I'm just going to tell my, my husband, listen, yeah, I'm staying in my pajamas. <gasps> I'm, I'm worshiping God. No. If that's B, it's you, then the most spiritual thing you can do is get up from sleep and um, wake up and understand that God gives sleep to fuel us, gives sleep as a blessing, but gives sleep to, to lift us up, restore us so that we can go to work, so that we can go and be witnesses and go and to work for him as well. Amen. Because when, as we read in Corinthians, in eating and drinking, let's do all things, everything to glorify God. So when we work, when, when we work, we glorify God. So um, there has to be a balance in this. So number, number A was, um, for some, the most spiritual thing they can do tonight, today, is to go to bed. Because we work and we work and we do so many things and we get too busy with all of these things and then we, we give ourselves three hours of sleep. No, not so. And for others, B, you can get up is the most spiritual thing you can do because you have been sleeping for too long. Amen. And then C is the, the in-between. Um, and that's just for a few. This may mean the most spiritual thing we can do is surrender our sleep for a season. What does this mean? We surrender our sleep for a season. You can ask a mother and a father when they have a newborn baby what I've just said. <laughs> if you knew new parents, then just give me a thumbs up. You are, <laughs> you are not um, failing in worshiping God when you have a newborn. Or maybe you, you're battling a sickness. Or maybe you um, are... Uh, warring in prayer okay um, and when you war in prayer and it's just for a season then you are surrendering your sleep for that season that doesn't mean you're failing God in worship um, because God blessed you with that child and God knows that parenthood will come a newborn comes with all kinds of challenges which one of them is not enough sleep so you've surrendered your sleep for that season but this is just for a few of us because not everybody is newborn parents. Not everybody goes um, into a, uh, through a warring prayer season. Not everybody goes into a battle with sickness or disease. And this is number C. So that brings me to um, the end of number one. Let's uh, worship God in our bodies by sleeping. By understanding that sleep is a blessing from God. And that is an act of worship. And it is an act of worship that will refuel us um, when we do sleep like God intends us to sleep. If you've come online and you don't know what we're busy with, um, we are busy with uh, the topic called how do we worship God with our bodies. And number one, we looked at sleep. So I'm going to end off this one, sleep with the following. We receive it daily as a gift given for these ends. Praising God when our head hits the pillow and praising God when our hand silences the snooze button. Did you get that? Let me give it to you one more time. We receive it daily as a gift given for these means. 
Okay? We receive sleep daily as a gift given for these means. Praising God when our hit, head hits the pillow. And praising God when our hand silences the snooze button. Who of you use your hand to silence the snooze button? Come now, real people, real people of God. We all, a lot of times, when that snooze button go, we're like, oh, and if you're not a morning person, that would be you. So I'm guilty here. Um, when I, I snooze the snooze button probably four times. But I put, I put the, the alarm early enough for me to snooze it four times. <laughs> so it just always feels better to snooze it four times. Amen. So, um, but that brings us to, <laughs> yeah, I do. Yes, Rian. I understand um, fully. So that's number one. Worship God with sleep. Number two is one of my favorite and um, it is worship God with food. If you love food and uh, you like your food, then uh, just give us a big amen or a thumbs up. Worship God with our food. Now here it gets quite interesting because we can indulge and overindulge with food and that becomes sin. But we also need to understand that the word of God is clear that food is a blessing or it's given by God for enjoyment. Um, that um, I'll give the scripture to you in a moment. But um, I, I want to start off here by saying this. God cared about food long before Burger King or McDonald's was around. Um, in the first chapter of the Bible, God created men and women in his image blessed them and gave them the weighty charge of filling the earth and subduing it. That was no small task. God knew it. So he immediately offered them help um, and they would, that they would need, which was food. God made food as a provision for his creatures. He gifted us with good fuel to sustain, nourish and energize our bodies for worship and witness. Did you get that? Long before any other restaurants was around, God made food and he gave that food right in the beginning for these reasons. He gifted us, he gifted us with good fuel to sustain, nourish and energize our bodies. Now, I'm going to say a couple of things and I hope I don't step on toes. And if I do, uh, please forgive me. But I believe that God is speaking to us and the Holy Spirit always convicts us in love regarding um, certain things. So, saying that about food, right? Yes, food is fuel. Food is fuel. <laughs> Ice cream is fuel, fuel. Yeah. <laughs> the culture around us markets food according to different criteria. So, this is the way... Um, the world has marketed um, food and how a lot of um, people now see food uh, because that's the way it's been portrayed um, by the world system. So first of all, there's quick, um, which you have more important ways to fill your schedule. So there's quick food like fast food. Then there's easy. You have more important ways to exert your energy, dry through right? <laughs> then there's cheap. You have more important ways to spend your money. Then there's tasty. You deserve to satisfy your cravings. Uh, and then there is those that are going to say, no, 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 but wait, wait, wait. I eat healthy. I eat healthy. Why do you eat healthy? That is the question. You know why most people in the world system eat wealthy or healthy, sorry, is they want to look good in those pair of jeans. Amen or aina? <laughs> I believe it is an aina. Matter of fact, we should eat well and we should eat healthy and we should eat um, food, but for the main reason that it is fuel. Use a yes, amen. Thank God for Romans. Amen. I second that, and um, God is good. 
all the time. And um, if you know me, you know that I'm a foodie. I love food. But um, I also understand that God's word and God gives for a reason. And there's also um, times that we need to understand um, how God wants us to, to look at food. And I think that is, that is the main thing. When we start seeing food as an act of worship, what, a, what, a, what is it about? You know, um, it says, remember the scripture we read in the beginning, um, whether it's eating or drinking, let's do everything to glorify God. So it's not that eating or drinking, um, and I'm not talking about alcohol, um, is bad. It, it is good. God made it for us. But we need to understand and, and, and our view on it needs to change. Um, we need to understand that in, in our eating, in eating food, we can worship God. It's an act of worship. And that, I mean, that just blessed me. That blessed me this week when I started looking at this. Our food can be an act of worship to God. Our, our eating can be an act of worship to God. So I'm going to read this. Um, my notes here, it says, Disciples of Christ ought to be asking this question, obeying accordingly. The Bible reminds us that our freedom is not to indulge the flesh, but instead to serve one another humbly in love. The Bible reminds us that we are not our own, but that we have been bought with a price and are to glorify God in our bodies. Yet the Bible also reminds us to eat and drink with enjoyment because there are these are from God's hand. If you want that scripture, it is in, um, it is in Ecclesiastics, Ecclesiastics 2 verse 24 and 9 verse 7. Um, so the Bible reminds us that eat and drink with enjoyment or reminds us to eat and drink with enjoyment because these are from God and God's hand. We are not slaves to our dietary decisions. Celebration calls for feasting to the glory of God while fasting is for abstaining to the glory of God. Did you get that? Celebration calls for the feasting to the glory of God and Fasting for the abstaining to the glory of God. But it is all to the glory of God. Amen. It is all to the glory of God. So, right now, um, I just want to also uh, share this with you. That food... Is to fuel our bodies. Food is not to indulge, and um, and indulge in in the flesh. Food is to fuel our bodies, and food eating can be an act of worship unto God. Eating and f understand why we eat, or why we abstain from eating, can be acts of worship, and um, that's number two of. Um, our topic, how do we worship God with our body? Body. So number one, sleeping. Number two, food. And number three, my favorite, exercise. <laughs> exercise. Hey, now, here we go. So number three is worship God with exercise. And... Um, before you, before you change the channel or switch me off or go now, uh, it, 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 it's, let me just um, get to uh, the explanation of this. This might not be the way we see, and it's definitely not the way we um, see exercise today. Exercise today is uh, you drive to the gym, not anymore because the gyms are closed, but we would drive to the, <laughs> we would drive to the, the gym and then we will jump onto the treadmill for 30 minutes just to tick the exercise box. Um, that is not the exercise um, that, and, and, and don't get me wrong, that exercise is fine, that exercise is good, but it's not that exercise that um, I want to touch on. Um, I want to touch on a lifestyle of exercise. Now, what do you mean by this, Pastor? Um, 
Now, I want to say this, and I, I please, I'm not saying this. Um, uh, I want to say this in all sensitivity, and I'm not being facetious when I say this. I'm just saying it for the the explanation and, and what I want to explain to you guys. But um, you're all familiar with what a Fitbit is, right? Fitbit. Now, um, I can clearly s state tonight to you that Jesus didn't need a Fitbit. Matter of fact, um, people that have studied Jesus' life uh, reckons that he walked in excess of 32,000 kilometers in the 33 years of his life. You heard right. In excess of 32,000 kilometers in 33 years. And he, I mean, he, some scholars, you know, speculate that is what he, the, the distance he covered in walking. Remember, um, when you, when, look, Israel is a small country, but still, when you walk from Galilee to Jerusalem, that is like 60 kilometers. That is like us walking to Pretoria. And Jesus did that in two days. Um, so, uh, but if we look at Fitbit, the actual company and their marketing, um, they, they, their slogan or what they go by says every moment matters and every bit makes a big impact. Now, I want you to listen tonight. It says every moment matters and every bit makes a big impact. And then they go on and they say, because fitness is the sum of your life. Did you get that? Fitness is the sum of your life. You see, Jesus was fit. If you look at the sum of his life, he was active and fit and exercised continually through the day, being active. And this is the exercise I want to touch on. The exercise in the gym or in your treadmill, that's, that's one thing. But being active... And making it a, a, a sum of your life is a different story. I'm sorry, uh, Carmen, I see you've fallen behind. Um, so uh, the topic we are talking about is how do we worship God with our bodies? And um, we looked at number one in sleeping or with sleep. We worship God with sleep. Uh, number two, we worship God with food. And um, number three, we're busy with, we worship God with exercise. So um, the idea of Fitbit bit was built on that fitness is not just about gym time. It is all the time. Man, and this just caught my spirit when I read it. It is like, it is exactly the way our spiritual fitness works. Our spiritual fitness is not just about church time. It is about all the time. Did you get that? Come on, give an amen. That is good stuff. And the, the guys of Fitbit, they, they feel the same about physical fitness. They say it's not just about gym time. It is about all the time. And um, this is going to challenge all of us. It's challenging me. It's challenged me already. And it will challenge you. Although, um, yes. Oh, I see you. <laughs> oh, you're not behind on the topic. You're behind on the 32,000 kilometers. Yes, I think all of we, all of us, are maybe a little bit behind on 32,000 kilometers. But um, I've got this app on my phone, and I think most of you've got it that count your steps. And um, you know, I think it's good to count our steps. I think it's good to see how active we are. And um, if we are doing the 10,000, at least 10,000 steps that we should do. And I understand, look, don't get me wrong. If you work behind a computer in, in, in an office, that's difficult for you because where are you going to walk to? Um, Pastor, I can't walk to the toilet and back 42 times. My boss will fire me. I understand that. I fully do. So our lives and our, the way we work and the way we set up sometimes just don't allow that. But um, I'm, just, I'm just wanting to get a point across of exercise and the view we have and should have on worshiping God with exercise. Worshiping God with exercise is a lot like the guys at, at, at Fitbit says, um, it's not about gym time, it's about all the time. So for many of us, exercise gets its own box, right? Like I said, we go to the gym or we go into the treadmill and we tick the box. 
Um, and then we sit behind our computers or we sit on the couch or we sit around all day long um, and we don't do too much after that. We make it to the gym in the morning, but um, we're inactive the rest of the day. So for many of us, exercise can no longer be equated with fitness and vitality. We may burn a few extra calories, strengthen some muscles and raise our heart rate on occasion. But how we see physical activity incorporated into our entire lives hasn't changed. So the Bible uses the body as an illustration for God's people. The church is the body of Christ. One body with many members. That's in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12. And like I said, you can dot down the, uh, jot down the, the, the scriptures I give you and you can go and read it in your own time. Um, God designed it this way. Giving each member specific gifting to contribute to the vitality of the body as a whole. The body of Christ as a whole. This isn't just for Sunday morning when God's people gather in church buildings. This is for every day. All the time, as God's people flex their gifting for the flourishing of the church everywhere. So this is a way of us worshipping God in spiritual exercise or even exercising our gifting every day, not just on Sundays, every day. This illustration works well when we understand the physical body in its God-given sense. Our physical bodies have many members. Each of these works in conjunction with the others for the vitality, the vitality of the healthy, the, the, the vitality of the body as a whole, the, the well-being of the body as a whole. Just as the church won't flourish if it only exercises its gifting one day a week, so too the body won't thrive on an occasional 30 minutes a day. The members need to be used, flexed strengthened and built up as a habit of life are you following me so and the fitness of our physical beings is a spiritual exercise did you get that and the fitness of our physical beings is a spiritual exercise an expression of how we respect what god has created and walk in a manner worthy of the calling we have received we view our bodies as vehicles of vitality that they might be used for the building up of the larger body. So we look at our bodies and we take care of our bodies because we see it as carriers of, uh, of well-being, carriers of vitality to the greater body of Christ, to the greater um, um, body of Christ, the, the church as a whole. And when we look after our bodies and uh, the vitality of our bodies and we, we um, come with our exercise, our spiritual exercise to the, to the body of Christ, we bring a vitality in the body of Christ as well. I hope you're following me. So I'm going to break this up again. Exercise just like I broke up sleep because there need to be some balance here. Number A, for some this may mean that the most spiritual thing we can do is start moving. Did you get that? For some of us, this means that the most spiritual thing we can do is to start moving. Instead of disciplining our body to subdue it for the sake of the gospel, we concede the complacence to complacency. The lethargy of our limbs handicaps our whole body. And when one part suffers, all suffer, as Paul reminds us regarding the body of Christ. So, for some of us, the most spiritual thing we can do today is get moving. Number two, for others, this may mean the most spiritual thing we can do is to slow down. We wear um, the self-disciplined label with pride, the trophies on our shelves showcasing our successes. Yet, at some point, we cross the line from godly discipline to idolatry. We worked for the win and not to worship Christ. Did you get that? We worked for the win and not to worship Christ. So exercise is good. Even when we've um, 
come to a, a place where we use exercise or um, let's say sport or whatever it is to accom accomplish uh, medals or, or, or prizes or some kind of level, um, we, have, we, we have to keep our view on it and our um, focus has to be to worship Christ and not to work alone for the win or to work for the win but to worship Christ. And then number three, for a few, this may mean the most spiritual thing we can do is to receive our restraints with thanksgiving. An illness or injury may inhibit inhibit um, activity but the charge to glorify God in our bodies remains the same so maybe you tonight and, and there's a few of us maybe or few that cannot exercise like we should because of some um, uh, defect or illness or injury um, that that is understandable but it doesn't take from us the the, the 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 command or the charge to still worship God with our bodies um, that remains the same. So, in closing, before we're going to have a question session, um, I want to say this. Um, in closing on exercise, there is a resurrection coming for people of God, a future day when the body will be raised imperishable. Now, if you're older than 40, you understand a little bit more about perishable. <laughs> but there's a day coming, and that's in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 42, that this body will be raised imperishable. But that day has not arrived. Until then, we move. We employ our bodies for the glory of God and good of others. And we accept fitness as more than mere exercise. We receive daily activity as a gift given from the vitality of our bodies and Christ's body, praising God with our hearts pumping and our muscles flexing. So, in, in closing, we value God's image displayed and Christ's kingdom advanced. We value God's image displayed and Christ's kingdom advanced. When, we, when do we do this? When we become instruments of worship when we start worshiping God with our bodies not just with our spirit and our soul but with our bodies as well then we bring glory to God and worship to God in everything we do and we value God's image displayed and Christ's kingdom advanced so in closing you have a body but it is not yours you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. You are always in a temple, so always worship. Did you get that? You are always in a temple, so always worship. So before I take questions, that's a challenge for this week. Let's focus on this. Let's worship God with our bodies. Let's worship God with sleeping, with our food, but also with exercise, with a lifestyle of exercise, a lifestyle of worship, becoming instruments of worship. Then we can, like Paul begs the brethren in in Rome to present their bodies a living sacrifice acceptable to God then we can truly in everything we do present our bodies a living sacrifice a living sacrifice of worship instruments of worship that is our reasonable service says Paul to the churches so um, you are more than welcome right now to um, send your questions um, and uh, then we're gonna see and answering them and discussing maybe one or two of them and um, then we'll take it from there and um, 
we can I hope you've enjoyed this topic so far or I hope that you have received some knowledge tonight and some understanding and uh, and that you understand a little bit more about worshipping God with our bodies. So as I wait for um, some questions, uh, I also want to maybe just give you one or two to see that I haven't skipped any of the scriptures. Oh, I gave you 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31. You can also go and read Galatians 5, 16 and 17. I gave you those scriptures. We read 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18. Um, yes. I'm going to give you some time. Is there any questions tonight? Anything that was unclear? Anything that you maybe want to just um, add or comment on? I'll just give you some time as I go to Romans 12 and end off with the scripture that we started off with. Romans 12, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. So, um, I'm going to also ask of you guys to comment on a in, in with a topic for next week, please. Next week, Sunday. If you can uh, put your topics down, then I'll pray about it. And uh, maybe if there's a topic that is more... Um, uh, well, if there's a topic that is obviously requested by more people, then we will look at that. Exercise a celebration of what your body can do, fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. That is exercise. Yes, it is definitely watching and learning from Northwest. Still learning from you, Robert. Hello, Antiria. Blessings. Dafa Noord Vesaf. It is altijd welkom. Charles, is there such a thing as too much ice cream? <laughs> uh, Charles, you just have to go there, right? You just have to go there. Um, yeah, I have to say that there is, unfortunately, your pastor is going to say this on recording, that there is, too, there is such thing as too much ice cream. Uh, we have to also, um, we have to, to really uh, look at that and use... Um, and discipline ourselves regarding that. If ice cream is to you what it's to me, then you you definitely have to to discipline yourself. Uh, Chantal is asking, just for interest's sake, is there any unclean food mentioned in the Bible? In the Old Testament, um, there is uh, food that was unclean or mentioned as unclean, but under the New Covenant. Um, God even uh, spoke to Peter and said, don't call um, something unclean that I have made clean. So um, Romans, I think Romans 14 speaks about um, Paul writing about um, food and that we shouldn't get into arguments and things like that regarding food. We should respect others um, and others view on food. So um, uh, Chantal, I would advise you to go and read Romans 14, I think it is. 14 is it 14 i'm just checking quickly for you um yeah romans 14 uh it says here uh, he who eats and eats to the lord for he gives god thanks and he who does not eat to the lord he does not eat and gives god thanks for none of us lives to himself and none who undi- no one dies to himself for if we live we live with the lord um, but I think, yeah, as you read through chapter uh, Romans 14 and I think, yeah, 14 and 15 will give you a little bit more about that. Amen. I hope that answers your question. And then there we, we have...
common here says when you are struggling disease in the body and it's affecting lack of appetite sleep and an ability to exercise but i still want to worship god through the storm how or what do i do that in that in the waiting yes um obviously uh, like i said sleep is a form of worship but uh, a lot of times um, a few of us will have to give up um, that sleep um, i actually said here um, in the notes that i'm just going to quickly go there uh, where is it yeah number three here or c was um, and for a few, this may mean that the spiritual thing we can do is surrender our sleep for a season. So when we do surrender our sleep for a season, um, regarding like you or um, somebody struggling with a disease or with a newborn baby, we do that. But we, um, we hold strong to the Lord and we find um, other ways where we struggle to maybe worship God with sleep, then we find other ways in worshiping God. You, Carmen, for instance, um, you have a beautiful voice and you should never stop singing to the Lord and worship Him in that way, obviously. And um, then there's uh, other ways as well. But um, being, I would say, submissive to God in, in, in being a living sacrifice, which means in everything I do, I give glory to God, I give worship to God. So um, even when you go through uh, the storms of life, even when you go through uh, disease, you can still worship God um, and and bring worship to Him in your living through the, the circumstances. Amen. I hope that that answers and helps. Any other questions? Uh, any other topics for next week? Anything that's jumped to your spirit? I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I hope it's challenged you. Um, it's definitely challenged me. But um, obviously we don't... Uh, Bible study about faith. Praise Lord. Yes. Amen. Monique, we can uh, look at that. Uh, it's, um, it's an awesome topic and uh, very extensive. But um, yes, we can definitely look at that. So it does. Thank you so much, Pastor. You're welcome. Is there any f further, anybody that wants um, to ask another question? So um, if there's no other questions, then... I will close for us in prayer, but I just want to give one more minute or so if there's any questions from you, your side. Um, I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's given you some food. Um, and may the week bless you. May uh, you be blessed in your going and uh, going in and going out, coming out. Yeah, walking in faith, faith, okay, I see power of prayer, yes, we can definitely look at those topics, um, so, uh, but as I end off in prayer, you can, more, you're more than welcome to still comment on this um, live feed with your topics, and then uh, please join me Wednesday evening for prayer night, for prayer session, hashtag we won't stop praying amen um, it's, it was great to see all of you here tonight it's great that you would um, take your time to study the word of God and um, may you worship God tonight in your sleep and with sleeping and may you worship him with <laughs> can we have ice cream after the teaching amen most definitely Will you worship him with the food that you're about to eat after this teaching? Um, most definitely, uh, it is a gift from God. And he gives it us to us to, to celebrate and to enjoy. So, um, may you, in your daily vitality, in your daily exercise, your daily act activities, um, worship him uh, with your bodies. Amen. So, won't you just close your eyes and let's thank the Lord for tonight. Father, thank you tonight, Lord, for who you are. 
Thank you, Lord, that we can, like Paul write, that we can come as living sacrifices before you, presenting ourselves as living sacrifices, holy, acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. Lord, thank you that we get to worship you. Thank you that we worship you even when we go to bed, even when we sleep, Lord, because it is a blessing from your hand. And Lord, because when we go to bed and we, wor we worship you, we sleep in peace, trusting in our God. Father, thank you tonight for our bodies. And thank you that it, our bodies is instruments of worship. Thank you that our bodies don't belong to ourselves, but they have been bought with a price and that they belong and they are the temple of God and that they are temples. Therefore, Lord, we worship in the temple, which means we always worship you. It is a lifestyle of worship. Help us, Lord, this week to walk in this lifestyle of worship. To bring you honor and glory, no matter what we do, in eating and drinking, and everything we do, we bring glory to God. We worship you, and we praise you, and we thank you, Lord, for your hand upon our lives. Thank you for your provision and your protection in this week. Thank you that you give your angels charge concerning us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, Amen. We thank you and I thank you tonight. May God bless you in this week. Um, I see there's some more topics coming up there. Yes, I will go through it. No problems. And I'll pray about it. And we will pick a topic. If I say we, the Holy Spirit, and I will pick a topic and we will study it next week, Sunday. Amen. I also see also study of hope and where to put our hope. Amen. I see more of you interacting with that. You are more than welcome. Thank you for anointing oils. Yes, there is more topics and I'll definitely take note of it. And um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for studying the word of God with me. You are always welcome. And I love spending time with you guys. And may God and God's word richly bless you. And may you be instruments of worship. Amen. God bless. Good night.